What's up, everybody? Welcome back to What I Watched in May. We're going to talk about everything I watched last month. Last month was a was a mixed bag. I've been mainly working just on YouTube videos rather than actually like watching a ton of stuff, but I still watched some stuff, so let's talk about it. I am meandering. Everything I saw in theaters, like every other month, I do an entirely separate video on it, so if you want my more in-depth thoughts, go check that out instead. I saw Boy Kills World in a completely empty theater on release weekend, and it was a lot of fun. Bill Skarsgård plays this like violent character who's uh who's in this violent dystopian i should say and he's just going around killing the world if you will it's a lot of fun i kind of wish more people would have seen this because like i said it's actually like a pretty solid action film i'm giving it a six out of ten i actually wouldn't mind watching it again but also i wish it would have committed to the bit a little bit more we also went to a drive-in this month so that was kind of cool we went and saw kingdom of the planet of the apes and ghostbusters frozen empire at the drive-in and kingdom of the planet of the apes was pretty fun honestly i enjoyed it quite a bit i do want to see it again hopefully with a little better of a setup than what the drive-in was giving us if you want my full like breakdown on the drive-in uh you can watch that video i definitely think kingdom of the planet of the apes is the weakest of the new apes films but i still think it's actually like pretty solid and a lot of fun they take certain directions to open up the world that i think is really interesting and i kind of hope with the litany of sequels they're announcing that we'll explore that some more so that I'm, I'm i'm very curious to see where we go from here i'm giving that one a six out of ten now i do want to say i'm not a huge ghost Ghostbusters fan. It's never been my franchise. I've never been huge into it. And so when I saw Frozen Empire was tacked onto it, we had to watch Afterlife, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But Frozen Empire, honestly, honestly, might be my favorite of the Ghostbusters movies. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of this franchise. I've never seen Ghostbusters 2. I've only seen the original and now Afterlife and Frozen Empire. And maybe it's a drive-in experience. I don't know, but I had a decent time watching Frozen Empire and I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. I still don't think I would like rewatch any of the Ghostbuster movies again but yeah I'm gonna give it a five out of ten lady and gentlemen <laughs> Furiosa Mad Max saga was a lot of fun I really enjoyed this one it really kind of leans right into Fury Road it's it's definitely the same styling as Fury Road as opposed to some of the other Mad Max movies but it's awesome it's a lot of fun the actions handled great it's unique fast-paced biting although the film kind of looks like absolute garbage the CGI is absolutely terrible there's so much noticeable green screen it's not even funny there's a lot of like unnatural lighting that doesn't look very good and kind of makes it even like the green screen even look worse but I think Chris Hemsworth gives us a career performance and I really really enjoyed this one it's just a full throttle ton of fun 8 out of 10 the last thing I saw in theaters was In a Violent Nature. This is a new slasher film that is from the perspective of the killer, and I love this movie. Honestly, this might be my favorite of 2024 so far. This is just like one of those movies where I watch it, I'm like, Gah, I wish I would have made this, you know what I mean? Like, it just does everything that I want to do in filmmaking in a way. I think this film is beautifully shot. I love its slower paced nature. That's not to say that the film doesn't have great pacing, because it does. The gore effects are handled beautifully. There's just so many great decisions but the film definitely has some of its issues too like some of the bad acting but I really love this film and actually the last thing I did actually see in theaters was In a Violent Nature I went and saw it again I saw it two nights in a row I saw it on Thursday night by myself because my wife wasn't like that interested in it well I talked her into going see him, seeing it with me on Friday and you know what she actually really enjoyed it so thumbs up <laughs> she actually liked this one so I was I was pretty pleasantly surprised I thought for sure she wouldn't have dug it as much as she did but she liked it and you know what I actually like the film more on a second viewing not enough to raise my rating because I do think a lot of my criticisms with the movie still stands but I did feel for one the pacing was lightning quick on the second viewing holy smokes did the film fly by on a second viewing but also for two I just really appreciated how they went about doing some things more on a second viewing and honestly <sighs> I kind of can't wait to see it a third time. I'm still giving this one an 8 out of 10. Actually, I lied because I forgot about this one. I had it in my streamed, but I actually went and saw this in theaters, and that was Challengers. I went and saw Challengers in theaters, not streaming. So actually, while the last thing I actually saw in the month of May was in a violent nature, I forgot Challengers. So Challengers, 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> I liked it. Uh, I definitely have some of my issues with it. I don't know if I would ever care to watch this again, which is one of my biggest issues. I definitely enjoyed it the first time around. I would probably watch it again just because I did enjoy it overall, but I don't think I'm going to glean that much, gleam that much, is that the right word, out of the second viewing. But I'm going to give it a seven and a half. If you don't know what it is, it's about Zendaya and there's two guys fighting over her about tennis. <laughs> there's a lot more to it than that. Check out my review. I'm not going to waste time. Speaking
Speaking of wasting time, here's the things I streamed. And one of those was Drive Away Dolls. I streamed this one on Peacock. And this is the first solo project of Ethan Cohen, who normally pairs with his brother, Joel. And if I would say anything, uh, it's it, I, I'm starting to thank all the talents in Joel because holy smokes did this film suck. Despite this being one half of the Cohen brothers duo, this feels like a student film attempting to make a Cohen brothers film with none of the charm, wit, or style that doesn't feel like it's just like Coen Brothers ship from Timu. The film follows two lesbians who get wrangled into some danger and nothing is explored here. The characters are painstakingly one dimensional, fostered by some pretty lackluster performances across the board. This is like one of those films where like almost every like scene could have just been cut out of the film and it wouldn't have made any difference because it builds to absolutely nothing. Nothing grows. There's seriously like a five minute short film worth of actual like growth and content in this film. There's just so much meandering and nothingness and I'm giving this one a 2 out of 10. This is one of the worst films I've seen in 2024, surprisingly. I also watched Baghead on Shudder. This is a film about Iris, a young woman, after being evicted from her apartment when her father passes away, leaving behind a massive and mostly abandoned pub. Signing the deed, she moves in to find a mysterious creature that in the basement can conjure the dead. The film presents some interesting ideas and a sequence talking to a character's dead wife that I actually thought was really great, but these are small glimmers in a film that is filled with terrible jump scares, bad effects, stiff and emotionless acting, forgettable music, and and bland cinematography, leading to a pretty frustrating ending that felt completely unnecessary because they just like, we gotta do a plot twist, right? Plot twist. It just took away all the tension whatsoever the film was building, especially towards the creature. The film also thinks like it had a really clever twist when it plays like a really unnecessary flashback. Like this film wasn't like instantly predictable from the get go. I don't know, I'm giving this one a three out of 10. You can check it out on Shutter if you want to. It's a three out of 10 for me. I also watched Dylan England's new short film, Two. This is his newest one. He sent me a screener link to it. So thank you, Dylan. I actually watched this twice. I watched it once by, once by myself and then once with my wife. We both really enjoyed it. I personally think so far this is the best work Dylan's done. I'll say this every time, but take anything I say about Dylan's films with a grain of salt. I consider him a friend. Because of that, I know there's probably going to be some unintentional biases towards some of his projects. I think this is actually like insanely, incredibly well done. Cinematography is great. Nikki Cappadia was absolutely amazing in the film. Caleb Paschal, I, I don't know if I'm saying that last name right, also did a really good job. But yeah, it's just really Really cool it's a really interesting idea that builds really really well in my opinion and I, I i gotta give the hats off to him dude excellent job i'm giving it a 9 out of 10 i think it's fantastic i think two is utterly fantastic i hope he releases it soon so everybody else can see it but yeah i think i think it's great it's a 9 out of 10 i also streamed another short film that nikki who starred in two and pesadilla both dylan's projects sent me it's called dairy express i actually watched this last month and forgot it because it's not on letterbox uh it was good there was some good cinematography the story was it was okay it's not really my cup of tea and I, I like it didn't really have like a resolution within its time limits very much but I think the film is a great tech demo I think not only does it give Nikki like some good moments to act but also I think it's really beautifully shot with great lighting I love the Wong Kar Wai like moment in it but there's also just like some fun ideas here that I kind of wish we had more time to explore because this is like a four or five minute short film that's on YouTube I will link it down below if you want to go check it out yourself I enjoyed it uh if I were to rate it I think I'd give it a six out of ten it's trying to be like a comedy kind of parody and I think if we had more time to explore some of that I think it would have been a lot better but yeah Dairy Express definitely pretty interesting show some good skill uh, 6 out of 10. The last thing I streamed was Ghostbusters Afterlife and I did not like this one so again not really connected to Ghostbusters don't really have much nostalgia toward the franchise and I hated every <laughs> I, did, I hated every character in this movie oh my god the main characters are so insufferable in this film and that made for a really boring boring movie i think the cgi looks pretty bad for the most part this is like a sequel reboot so technically this is like a sequel to the original ghostbusters films but also is trying to set up new characters to pass the baton off to and i think it did an okay-ish enough job to pass that baton off especially when we get frozen empire as the backup but i kind of went more in depth with this on a full review on the video i did about the drive-in so if you want to check that out go check that out 
So the last stuff I watched is the stuff I own and it's not a big pile. So I'm gonna kind of just burn through this really quick. I watched Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. I would give it a seven out of 10. I think it's pretty good. This film is about the uh, Iraq interpreters, right? It's Iraq, Afghanistan interpreters during a uh, conflict or war, whatever you want to call it that happened over the Middle East where <coughs> he saved Jake Gyllenhaal's character's life and Jake Gyllenhaal is trying to get him the citizenship. Honestly, like if you look into some of the actual like true stories about like the interpreters helping us and then us doing nothing for them it's really kind of frustrating it's like really kind of frustrating is what i'm trying to say it's really kind of frustrating uh and this film explores that while also having some really awesome and fun guy ritchie action set pieces i think jake gyllenhaal does an amazing job in this but i think dar salam if i'm saying that wrong i apologize uh salim maybe was really good in this a uh, really solid war movie put out by guy ritchie definitely recommend checking it out i'm giving it a 7 out of 10. a rewatch for me is philomena starring judy Dinch and Steve Coogan. This is a film I watched back, I think, in theaters when it came out and picked it up uh, wherever I found it. I found it used, maybe FYE. But uh, I love this movie. I think this movie's fantastic. I made my mom and my wife watch it as part of like my birthday because I had been trying to get both of them to watch this film forever because I know this was like right up both of their alleys. If you know what this film was about, it's about Judy Dench's character who gets her son basically taken from her and adopted out by the nuns of this nunnery she worked at. And Steve Coogan, who is a journalist, kind of helps her track down her son. It is emotionally impactful. I think Judy Dench was robbed of the Oscars of 2013, right? I think it's 2013. 2013 or 2014. I don't know. She was nominated, but she didn't win it. She deserved to win it. Especially when I looked up the category, which Kate Blanchett won it for Blue Jasmine, which I haven't seen. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Steve Coogan's great in this. I love Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan, I think he's a really underrated actor. Definitely recommend the Trip series if you haven't seen that. But yeah, I think this is just a really really a really good like crowd pleaser movie well made it has some great direction i love the choice to use different film stocks for different time periods and also splicing in real footage because this is based on a true story great uh, i'm giving it an eight out of ten i've seen it twice and both times i would say eight out of ten now we're going to talk about suzume this is the newest film by Makoto Shinsky. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Makoto Shinsky. This is the director of Your Name and Weathering With You. And I think this is better than Weathering With You. Not quite as good as Your Name, but really good. This film is beautifully, beautifully animated. The animation is absolutely gorgeous in this film. <clears throat> the story is basically about a girl who finds this mysterious door that leads into a basically kind of mysterious world that lets these giant creatures out that causes earthquakes in Japan. Along the way, she meets somebody who closes these doors, and when a spirit gets let out, he gets transformed into a chair. <laughs> the film is about them trying to hunt down the spirit and stop these worms from basically a huge catastrophe. Not only do I think the characters are really, really well fleshed out, but there's a strong emotional like resonance between the main character and the chair that I think, while is, is built really quickly, it definitely comes across as fleshed out in terms of the story. I love the world it's building and the whole, like, you know, these giant worms that cause all these problems like i just love the whole like atmosphere of that i think it's really cool but it also makes for some really exhilarating and really fun action set pieces that i wasn't really expecting going into this i definitely really enjoyed susan may i'm going to be checking out again at some point it's a contender for my best of is it a 2022 or 2023 movie i can't remember but an eight out of ten the last things i watched was dune i watched dune part one and part two part one i have seen again i have seen before and i think i cover on the channel on a, on a second watch i'm still sticking with it an eight out of ten i think doom part one really encapsulates the book really well i think it sets up the world perfectly it explains things without basically just being over explaining or exposition dumping it shows you how the world works you get to spend time with these characters it's huge in scale the cgi is beautiful the lighting is beautiful the cinematography is beautiful the performances are great and i really enjoy part one honestly i think part one is a fantastic film that feels unfortunately incomplete because you have part two so part one literally has no conclusion like it's not a standalone film at all and part two i wasn't big on i'm not gonna lie to you i, I really i really wasn't big on part two i found it i 
What's what's the book itself? It's funny because part two story of the book I like way more than part one of the book that the film covers in part one. In terms of the film, I found part one way more engaging and exhilarating. Where part two, I feel like we kind of underdevelop some of the more interesting aspects of the story. Like Fade Rotha, I don't think gets a lot of limelight. That should have been a really strong point of the story. I also kind of feel the whole Benny Gesserit and their like political uh, inner world workings uh i don't know how to say it like their puppetry wasn't really explored very much either it feels kind of like it was kind of glossed over and kind of skipped over a little bit and i feel like we spent a lot of the time with paul kind of just being a whiny i don't mean a whiny teenager an angsty teenager out in the desert which is like fine <laughs> but it's definitely the less interesting part of the story and the whole thing with like him and uh, i can't remember her name but zendaya's character feels really kind of under i want I don't know if underdevelops the right word, but like, cause you spend a lot of time with them, but it doesn't feel natural. It feels unnatural. It feels forced. And I'd really don't feel like her and Tim Cham have a lot of on screen, on screen chemistry. And I do feel like that kind of bleeds over into the film itself. Yeah. I, I was really kind of expecting to go into part two and, and love it as much as part one and part one, I'd give an eight out of 10 and part two, honestly, I'm, I'm giving a six out of 10. I, I will watch it again, but I will say this. I've not had a desire to watch it again. And and part two is where part one, I mean, granted part one, I've seen twice now, but part one stuck with me for a while after I watched it. Part two, it's already gone. Like it, like it's just like, eh, you know what I mean? So that is everything I watched in May. I will hopefully see you in the next month. You want to support me, consider subscribing, becoming a member or Patreon. And I have other videos in the work, always other videos. I'm tired. <laughs> Bye.